In this video, we're going to be covering the topic of sedimentary structures or primary structures. Um, these are characteristics in sedimentary rocks that can um, give you all sorts of clues as to how the sedimentary rock formed, what the environment was like, um, what the wind or the water was doing at the time, which direction the wind was, was blowing, um, which direction the water was flowing. Um, sedimentary structures are super cool and it's a really great way to learn about the paleo environment or the past environment. So one first sedimentary structure that we're going to talk about is really important and it's something called bedding. Um, and this is based off the principle of horizontality and that is the idea that sedimentary rocks are laid down flat at the start of their life. Um, obviously all sorts of things can happen to sedimentary rocks over time. They can get folded, they can get faulted, um, but generally they are laid down flat to begin with. So bedding is, or a single bed, is a single layer of sediment or sedimentary rock um, with a recognizable top and bottom. So remember, as rocks get lithified, they get put under a lot of pressure, but as those rocks get exhumed to the surface at a place where we can observe them again, um, that pressure gets lifted off and the, the layers in between beds are going to become more prominent and they're going to stand out to us when we observe them. Um, so Oftentimes with sedimentary rocks, it's really easy to identify bedding. You can see in the rocks here in this diagram, um, in this top view here, this first picture, you can see bedding from way far away. You can see it from, you know, we're many hundreds of meters away from uh, these uh, hills or these, these cliffs here. Um, but you can actually identify bedding. It's pretty close to horizontal. It's maybe tilting off to the left. Um, you can really identify the orientation of bedding here. Um, a bedding plane is the plane between two beds. It's just the boundary between two beds. Um, we might refer to several beds as strata. So you'll hear that word pretty frequently. We might call sort of this package of sedimentary rocks, we might call that strata. Another um, very common sedimentary structure or what we call a primary structure, a rock that, uh, a structure that formed as the rock was forming, we call that a primary structure. Um, another very common one is cross bedding. Um, cross beds form as sediment is uh, being transported and deposited on the leading edge of a dune or a ripple. Um, as you might know, if you've ever gone and observed a dune or uh, maybe a ripple, some ripples in um, a lake, uh, this summer I was fortunate enough to go up to Lake Tahoe um, and I was just standing um, in the shallow water at the beach and I was standing on a bunch of really beautifully formed ripples. It was really cool. Um, so you can go to a lake and, and observe ripples um, today during, you know, in modern time. And you can also go and observe dunes. Um, Death Valley is a particularly great place to observe modern migrating dunes. There are just huge dunes that are moving across the floor of the valley um, in Death Valley. It's really neat. Um, but cross beds, they are um, the sort of the preserved dunes in, um, in a sandstone, for example. Um, this is a really, a really good example here in this photo of um, these preserved dunes. So you can see what we call main bedding, right? We talked about bedding in the previous slide. So main bedding is here. It's uh, even though these rocks have been tilted, bedding's not exactly horizontal anymore, but when this rock formed, bedding was more or less horizontal. So we have the main bedding plane here, and then we have what we call cross bedding, which is at an angle to uh, the main bedding plane. And it kind of um, is asymptotically related to the bedding plane at the bottom. It sort of like groups up with the main bedding um, at, the, at the bottom of the dune. Um, but yeah, this is a really excellent example of cross beds preserved in sandstone. Um, this also illustrates, this is really cool, but you can actually look at a rock like this and you can say exactly what the wind direction was when those dunes existed in the past. So, so what's actually happening here is you have sand grains that are being pushed by the wind up the uh, shallow side of that dune and then eventually getting pushed over the steep edge of the dune. Um, and being deposited there. Maybe they make their way up the shallow side of the next dune. Um, but 
when you look at this pattern, you can observe what the direction of the wind was. The wind was actually perpendicular to the cross beds um, at the time of deposition. So let's do a little bit of an exercise here. Um, look at the image on the left, and um, I've outlined the main bedding planes of this rock in red. This is a rock out in Utah. It's a sandstone. And I want you to look at this rock and try to determine what the direction of the wind was when uh, the sandstone was originally deposited. And you'll want to look between those two red lines at the orientation of cross bedding there. Got it? Okay, so hopefully you observed cross bedding starting at the top on the left and then going down to the right. So that is the orientation of those cross beds. And so the direction of the wind, these are, these are a lot smaller, shallower dunes than the ones illustrated here, but the direction of wind during deposition is from the left to the right. Hopefully you got that. And it's important to note here that it's entirely okay for the direction of the wind to change over time. So you might see um, a dune that is that was going one direction and then the next um, you know the next layer on top of it, the wind was moving the opposite direction. That happens. Okay, so let's talk about ripples for a little bit here. So ripples form in sort of a similar um, similar kind of scenario, uh, but they're typically formed by water. Um, and they can kind of come in two different flavors. So you can have asymmetric ripples that sort of have a shallow side and a steep side, um, or you can have symmetric ripples in which both sides of the ripple are sort of the same um, angle. When you have asymmetric ripples, that usually means that the current is going in one direction for an extensive period of time. Um, sort of like the dunes that we were talking about. You can determine the, di the direction of the dunes. You can also determine the direction of um, single direction ripples. Um, if the ripples are symmetric, um, then the current is likely back and forth. Um, when I was at Tahoe, for example, over the summer, I was observing symmetric uh, ripples. So the waves were coming in and out on the beach. Um, here's an example on the left here of modern day ripples, sort of like the ones I observed at Lake Tahoe. I think these are on a beach somewhere by the ocean. Um, but these are an example of, a mo of modern day ripples being formed. And then um, on the right here, you can see um, ripples preserved in sedimentary rock. So they look really similar to the rocks that we would observe today during present day. It's amazing how well preserved these can be. Um, I have been fortunate enough to see some really cool ripples um, throughout my field work. These rocks here on the left, these are some of my favorite rocks um, and one of the coolest outcrops I've ever observed. Um, so you can see that these ripples um, here are pretty large. They're maybe a foot long in their wavelength. So they're, they're pretty sizable ripples um, and they're pretty symmetric as well. And they're no longer flat lying something uh, pretty serious has happened to these rocks. They are no longer lying flat down um, like they were originally and they have been turned up um, completely on their side. Again, one of my favorite outcrops, most favorite outcrops ever. Um, and on the right here, you can see another example of much smaller ripples. There's a standard pencil here for scale. Um, and again, fairly symmetric ripples here. Um, and it's really interesting because the, the ripples themselves are a little bit reduced. They're a little bit green compared to the reddish, uh, the rest of the mudstone um, underneath. So um, another really beautifully preserved example of ripples. Um, another primary sedimentary rock or sedimentary feature um, that you'll see frequently are mud cracks. Mud cracks are super cool to find um, preserved in a rock. Um, mostly because they are excellent way up indicators. So what I mean by that is if you have, you know, like, like I showed you, you can have a rock that has been turned up on its side and you may not know which direction was the original up direction on those rocks. Um, the up direction is this way, right? Down and to the left was the original up direction. Um, Mud cracks are an example of something that can help you determine which way was initially up on your sedimentary rock. Um, so you can look at 
Uh, these are modern day mud cracks, right? Um, and then the rocks here in the lower right are preserved mud cracks, mud cracks that have been preserved in a rock. Um, I have a really cool sample. I wish I knew where it was. It is lost somewhere, but I have a really great sample from um, the Mojave Desert. Um, that is actually, it's a mud crack cast. So um, there were mud cracks and then uh, there was actually an ash fall deposit on top of the mud cracks. So the mud cracks were there and then a volcano erupted and ash was deposited onto the mud cracks and um, fell into the mud cracks, right? And then that was preserved as a rock. So I have the the ash, it's a cast. So you actually, you can see the cracks um, preserved in the ash that was on top of the mud cracks. It's very, very cool. I hope that I can find that rock someday because I really love it. Um, another primary sedimentary feature that I wanna talk about, um, or, or sedimentary structure, I should say, um, are graded beds. And these are formed um, typically by, by a change in velocity. So previously we talked about how sediments need to be transported and they get transported by a transportation medium like, um, like wind or water or ice. Um, but in this case, it's typically water that is carrying the sediment. And um, if there's a change in velocity, then the size of the class that can that can be carried by that medium um, will change as well. So if your transportation medium, the water, the water is moving relatively quickly, um, it's going to be able to carry larger class. And if that water slows down, it's only going to be able to carry smaller classes. So you're going to expect um, if that water slows down that the sediments are going to drop out of the, of the water. So an example um, of a change in velocity, and this, is, this takes place over a relatively short amount of time, is turbidity currents. Off the slope here in the ocean, the sediment will suddenly be transported down the slope. Um, and again, it happens really quickly, and this, the velocity of the water or the turbidity current um, changes rather quickly. So it goes from being really fast to much slower. Um, and the result of that is what we call a graded bed. So um, a bed where you have uh, one size of class at the bottom and a different size of class at the top and a gradation in between. These can happen in sort of two different ways. You can get large class uh, grading up to small class or small class grading up to large class. Um, normal, normal graded beds have larger class at the bottom and smaller class at the top, um, but it's also totally possible to get the opposite. Um, but turbidity currents um, typically create uh, normally graded beds from large class to small class because they're slowing down over time. Um, but turbidity currents typically uh, will form beds that are normally graded from large class to small class um, because the velocity of those is fast and then it slows down rather rapidly. All right, and with that, I hope you learned a little something about sedimentary structures, one of the most interesting parts of sedimentary rocks in my opinion, um, and I hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.